Um, we've got a quite short presentation. Um, I was a little bit worried that I was going to be too repetitive. I did the Fedora 36 release party and I didn't really want to rehash just what I did for that. So I kind of cut it down. And then I saw in the polls that it's like 40% people who are first time at Nest and, and new to this. So I was like, ah, so I rejigged things a little bit. Um, I like to do these presentations based on questions that I get from people. And there is the Q&A tab on Hopping, which is fantastic. So please put questions in there and I will try and make it sort of like somewhat interactive um, and, and it's kind of hard without the uh, without the actual voice pieces. Um, I can be contacted, Mark Pearson at Lenovo.com. You're welcome to do that with the only caveat that I'm on vacation next week and offline. So expected delay and replies and my inbox is crazy, but uh, I would love to hear from people. Um, I don't want to talk at people. I'd like to hear from you. Um, and I'm going to hang out in the sponsor social and I'll try and hit some of the other socials um, later on today. Uh, so let's see if this works. Cool. Um, so the table of contents, I don't actually, I, I'm very happy to be flexible on what topics to cover. Uh, I'm going to go through the first three um, and then I'll check on the Q&A and see which topics people want to cover. So I'm just putting this up here so you can have a think about it. Um, so. So for Eddie, just know, yep, the presentation started. Um, so cover the first three. I've had lots of questions about the X13S ARM. So uh, if you guys are interested, I can talk a little bit about what's happening with that platform and some of the Linux work being done there. Um, I put, I removed last year's issues, but I put it back in um, basically because I know there's lots of people who might not have heard the Fedora 36 release party talk. I actually recommend going to that one because it's going into more detail, but I can do a quick snapshot if people are interested into what happened last year. Um, secured core PC third party certificate. I don't know if people see Matthew Garrett's blog. I know it was a, you know, there's lots of questions floating around about that. If uh, there's questions about it, I'm happy to answer those. Talk about that. WAN comes up a lot on our Lenovo Linux forum. So it's an option. Uh, open source contributions. I think those are a key part of doing a Linux program for any vendor. So happy to share what we're doing and some of the progress we've made. Still a long way to go. Um, MIPI camera, uh, just as a note, don't buy an X1 Carbon, Yoga, or Nano with a MIPI camera because Linux support doesn't work. But I can go into the details of that if you're interested. And then the last two, genuinely, I was, I'd was i love to hear Fedora experiences on our laptops. Genuinely like talking to people and hearing that. So it's kind of Fedora experiences, open for us, open. I, if we get time to them, uh, I would love to do that. So I'm just going to try to keep an eye on the chat. Uh, but uh, OK, so we've got some good questions coming up. And I think that's going to work out fairly well. Alrighty, so very quick introduction. And my apologies for all the Fedora people who have attended this talk before. You're like, yeah, shut up, Mark. We know who you are. But uh, just for those who do not, I am the technical lead for the Lenovo Linux PC team. Basically, it's uh, you know the team I work with. Uh, it's our job to get Linux running well on the laptops and desktops and uh, the the, the Lenovo PCs that are part of our Linux program. Um, it's an awesome job. Um, I, I get to play with Linux every day, and I get to work with the communities, and I get to work with Upstream, and I get to work with hardware vendors on Linux. It's, uh, so that's pretty awesome. I have been working with Linux for 20 years. I kind of ended up with it by accident, uh, and very happy accident. I've been with the Linux, the, the PC team for three years. So, and it, it's been a blast. It's a little bit crazy sometimes, but um, lots of challenges, but genuinely, it's very cool to be able to come and work with people like the Fedora community, that that's the bit that makes my toes tingle. Um, uh, yeah, the last bit is my kids bet me I wouldn't put this on on a on a slide. Uh, the good looking one in the photo is my dog Nix. Uh, and just as a note, because it's nothing to do with Linux, it's Nix N Y X after the Greek goddess of darkness, because my uh, eldest daughter was a Greek mythology nut. Already breaking news. So I literally I put this into my slide deck an hour ago. Uh, that breaking news. So. Uh, X1 Carbon 10 is going to be online. This is from our internal test site where they basically put it up and I can review it and say, yep, there's no issues. Um, so this is not live yet. This is from the US internal test site. So we will have the X1 Carbon 10 with Fedora up in the US, I expect by next week. Uh, important note, ignore the pricing. Pricing has not been set yet. Um, it's, it's long, so just ignore the pricing. But just want to say, Yay, platforms are actually going online this year. Um, we can maybe, you know, we discussed the the issues last year, but um, 
but yeah, this year is looking <laughs> so much better. And uh, this is actually, this is my second platform. The P360 uh, went up uh, as well uh, last week. Um, but this is the yeah, first one with Fedora is up this year. So that's exciting. And um, yeah, literally fresh, hot off the press this morning. Um, already. And this is the last in full slide. And after that, I will make it more flexible. But I just wanted to kind of give an update. Again, this overlaps a lot with what was in the Fedora release party presentation. But just to give an update on what our team is doing for this year, um, we have a whole heap of Linux platforms. There's, uh, I think, 36 plus, there's 35 on there. And then we also have Think Center, Think Edge um, platforms uh, going on. Um, of particular interest, of course, for you guys is we have more Fedora platforms. So uh, I think it was actually two years ago, the big feedback from the Fedora community was more AMD. So you got more AMD. Uh, so there's a few exciting ones. The, the Z series, which I'm really enthusiastic about. Uh, we have the Z13 and the Z16. Uh, the just literally going through final tests with Fedora on those, and it's looking good. Uh, a quick note, say thank you to the release team and Ben Williams for basically doing us the Fedora uh, respin image so that we can put that into our test team. And so far it's good. We have, we have one last uh, card reader BIOS related problem that is <laughs> happened last week. There's always a last minute problem, but uh, I'm hoping I'll be signing off on those soon. X1 Carbon, as you saw, is, is ready to go. Um, we've also added the P16S AMD on the workstation side, um, which, is a, which is a nice one to have, add. I've been very happy to put that in. And then we have the next gen for the P1 uh, and the P15 and the P17 have now been replaced by the P16. So we're doing Fedora P, P1 and the P16. Uh, I'm a bit nervous about those two, just as a heads up. I'm not seeing progress on the Nouveau front uh that i was hoping so i don't know where we'll stand with these two from a fedora release because of nvidia but we will see uh, i don't want to be negative ahead of time but i'm nervous on that one but so it's good uh, more fedora platforms we have new platforms generally we've added the l series amd the e series is new um we've not done the e series before um so they've joined and that's nice to have some of the lower end platforms uh, we have some issues there with the fingerprint reader but, uh, it, I'm, I'm happy to see our, our Linux portfolio growing, growing and, and obviously the Z series that we talked about. This is the Z series is the high end uh, AMD. It's kind of the equivalent of the X1 on the Intel side. It's cutting edge. So we have it on the AMD side. And um, AMD have a, a, an awesome uh, Linux team who've been doing so much great work. It's, it's, it's good to see. I think I saw in Phronics that AMD are now one of the lead contributors in the kernel. Uh, if you're interested in the technology side of things, so on the Intel side, our platforms are Old Lake this year. So you will see Old Lake P primarily on the ThinkPad and Old Lake H on the workstation. So the, the fun thing with Old Lake is it's got these E cores and these P cores. So you're getting um, this efficiency and these performance cores. So you should see a performance bump. Um, as it's quite cool technology. It's, it's given us some challenges with thermal. Um, but uh, I think that's that's now getting that solved, and it's uh, sh sh nice platforms. Uh, Intel have done a good job there. Um, AMD have the Rembrandts and the Barcellos, so Rembrandts on the Z series, and I think the T's, and then Barcellos on the L series. Um, they're doing some amazing work there. Uh, I haven't put them in the table. We have Think Center, which is the desktops. And we have a new Think Edge portfolio for the uh, Edge related. I, I attended the IF Fedora IoT talk yesterday, and that's very interesting. Uh, something to keep an eye on. Um, so I haven't put those on. I previously have avoided kind of talking about Think Center because the Linux port there has, has been a bit hit and miss. Um, but they, they're stepping up, they're doing your VFS support, they've been directing. So um, we're going to be trying to get those online too. And yeah, funny enough, I wrote these slide decks before I had the uh, X1 Calm sort. So yeah, platforms going online now. We have a bunch that are completed. Obviously, we've not finished all of them. There's a lot that's still in the work. I should probably have figured out a way of highlighting which ones are actually done. But um, I think we have like eight done and the rest are, are in progress. Alrighty, so I'm going to take a little pause and just have a quick look at the questions. So, uh, oh, actually, no, thank you. So, Christian, you have so 
web sales and you had missed something um so yes on web sales last year we had troubles getting them online that were had technical issues and we had supply issues um so the good news is is uh, it's looking better for this year north america uh we expect to get our linux platforms online the north america web team have been very supportive and they keep they kind of jumped that x1 carbon in the queue a little bit so that i could have something to show at the fedora conference uh, i was hoping to get the full online one we came very close um EMEA, uh, so that's Europe, uh, has also been uh, quite enthusiastic about getting some Linux platforms up. Um, I'm waiting for the final confirmation. Uh, summer's always interesting with people on holidays, uh, but I'm expecting to get platforms up in the EMEA. Um, Christian, you have a question about a discount, and I'm not sure I understand that. So the, I mean, the Fedora project portal should work anywhere if it doesn't let me know i checked with the portal team a couple of weeks ago and they said everything was up and running so um if i'm missing something there just let me know and i can go and chase that down uh we have had platforms up in uh, anz uh, anz uh, australia new zealand so we got some platforms up there last year and uh, they are going to put up more this year so we should have more platforms up in australasia um I actually got some positive feedback from Latin America, which is for me has been a big one. I've really wanted to get some Linux platforms up in Latin America. I know we have a big Linux community there. Um, last year, they they were just not able to do anything. So I don't have it confirmed, but uh, that they're, they're, they're evaluating it. They're looking at it. So fingers crossed, we will have some up uh, in, in Latin America. Um, and yeah, South America, Central America. And lastly, we got a couple of platforms up in India last year. I have not heard back from the India web team yet uh, to be able to know, but I'm hoping because we did it last year, we will get more flying there. Alrighty. Uh, uh, Andre asked about idea pads, et cetera. So we know we're not doing idea pads yet. I get asked about idea pads a lot. I would love to do them. It really has to come from the product team. Um, and they need um, consumer, you know, they need consumer demand for that. So uh, let them know. And it sounds awful. It's that like, I'm not the most helpful person to let know that because just I, I'm going to be supportive. Um, there are some potential projects happening internally that might help. But basically, if you do buy an idea pad, uh, you should get the customer survey uh, on it. Make sure you put in that. I wanted to buy Linux. And otherwise, yeah, uh, don't. don't post in the Linux forum because that will just end up going to me but you can you can post in the you know the Lenovo forum saying hey I wanted uh, I want Linux on my dear pad or you know they, they they Lenovo customer team monitor forum so if you find ways of letting them know do it's kind of one of those customer demand they have to see that there are there's enough customer demand to make it it uh, make for it to make sense um, Eddie, that's an interesting one. So is there any desire to try to open source the BIOS, uh, Core Boot? So actually, I haven't been asked a Core Boot question in, in a while. So um, I think basically the short answer for now is no. Uh, it, it sounds, it, it would be a great thing to do, but that's not something we're ready to do yet. Um, Carl, how much does the Fedora contribute a discount? Uh, my understanding is, is it's uh, similar to the employee discount. It's a little bit less and it really depends. So my experience with the discounts has been when there's not a sale on, it can be very good. When there's a sale on, check the sale prices. So it's kind of like getting a sale, you know, but just through the air if there's anybody who I, i'm not looking at the chat window but if there's anybody who's used it and the comments but i don't get any say in the pricing um i really don't it's kind of always a little bit the web team comes up with that um and so i don't actually get to any say in the pricing but so it's, it's sometimes a little bit of a mystery already so i ran out of questions already uh everybody good let me just have a quick check on the chat uh do, 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 do. Alrighty. I am going to I'm sure I saw somebody say it say arm and I know I was asked about it in the social room yesterday. So I'm gonna talk about the X30S. Um so this is the new uh arm based platform ThinkPad that uh we've released. 
uh, with Windows. So it's not in the Linux program. Just want to be clear about that. Um, <laughs> yes, Luna, it's the same slide as DevConf. A lot of these are actually reused. I'm my apologies for that. Um, <laughs> So uh, it does have a Debian um, desktop on it because the developer who's working on it is is working with Debian. It's uh, you know I, I didn't tweet these slides particularly. So uh, ARM have been great. Uh, ARM uh, have came to us and said, "Hey, look, can we do Linux on this platform?" And and I've tried with previous platforms and not been successful. But uh, this time the product team were like, "Yeah, okay." So we're doing it as a proof of concept. Uh, we're kind of basically it's a it's, this is the fun part of my job where you know we get to play and see what we can do. Um, so we can work with ARM and Linaro um, to see how far can we push Linux on this. Uh, and it's genuinely going quite well. Um, so we have Linux up and running. We have the, 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 the developer working on it as Debian. That's actually my machine. So it, I've reproduced it. So it has Linux up and running. There's a bunch of stuff that doesn't work, um, which they're still going on the, you know, like Wi-Fi is not working, Bluetooth is not working, uh, the graphics driver is not working yet, um, power management is not there, but we think we're going to be able to fix all of those. Um, the only one that I think is going to be a blocker is potentially the camera, because it's a MIPI camera, and we're not sure if we're going to be able to get, uh, find a solution for the camera, um, still being worked on. Uh, from the Lenovo side, so I actually pushed the firmware needed for this platform up to Linux firmware yesterday, so yesterday or Wednesday, I don't know, I forget what day it is. Um, and that's, I mean, it's been reviewed, it's not accepted yet, but uh, hopefully it'll be accepted. And again, that will make deploying, you know, being able to do a Fedora installer and do a, just basically a, install a Linux distro on it uh, normally without having to jump through a whole bunch of hoops, that will be a large part of that. We are also looking, we need to make changes to the bootloader so that it can, past the device tree blob. Uh, this is going to be using device tree, not ACPI, for anybody who's interested in those nitty gritty details. Um, so we are looking at how we make changes to the bootloader to support a, a Linux mode and pass the device tree out. So it, it, it's very much proof concept. It's not going to be online with a Linux preload, uh, or at least that's quite unlikely, but it's fun. Uh, and it's uh, I know I, it's one of those I see a, a lot of um, questions about. So that's the X13S. And no new questions. All righty. Uh, all right, what was next? If I'm not seeing questions, I'm just going to talk at you guys. You've been warned. Ha -ha. Um, I wasn't going to, I'm going to cover this one very briefly. Um, this, this really does remap onto the uh, Fedora 36 release party, but um, without going into details, last year was challenging, bunch of technical issues bunch of uh, supply chain issues. So uh, pretty much no. Um, but I kind of wanted to focus more on some of the highlights. So we did actually, at the end of it, so we did the same number of platforms last year. Um, we did manage to actually deliver Linux on all our planned platforms. I know we had a couple of fails on the Fedora front with uh, because of the uh, Nouveau driver issues, but we did actually manage to get a Linux delivery on everything we planned to, which <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of work and we're quite proud of. Um, I did, despite all the issues, we had a few more web teams engaged and we had more Linux systems actually online with our Ubuntu preload because um, they weren't Fedora platforms. Um, and I think one of the bits that for me made a big difference is getting much closer ties with the hardware vendors. And, and I think that's really started to make a difference and it's, and it's been important. It, it's the way that it works is, Lenovo is the customer with these hardware vendors, and it's really important they they need to provide the Linux support. We don't want to be, we can't be reverse engineering everything, and so that that has been much better uh, working with with all the vendors. So before we've always had Intel and AMD, who have always been great, um, but now you know, I have contact with the NVIDIA people. I have contact with Synaptics, contacts with Elan. Uh, um, real tech, media tech, you know, all, all of these different hardware vendors and they're doing Linux drivers. So um, we had a bunch of Wi-Fi component changes and the, it, it was painful. But the good news that came out of it all is all of these vendors were doing Linux drivers that went upstream. And yeah, it meant, you know, Linux didn't work for six to nine months after, you know, after Windows, but we actually got 
vendor, you know, the, the official support. So that for me um, is, is, is important. I think it helps drive the drive Linux generally, not just Lenovo. I think this has a, this is important across the ecosystem. Uh, question from James, will we ever see any ThinkPad with the risk V? I can't answer that one. Uh, the, the coy answer is I can't actually talk about future platforms. I'm not allowed to. Uh, and and honestly, in this case, I don't know. So, sorry. A uh, couple more questions in Q O Q and A. Why no FWD up firmware for X250 BIOS and similar models? Okay. Um, and a question about docking stations. So, uh, da -da -da. I am going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to segue it. So let's go do to open source contributions. Um, I will get to the LVFS question. So just I'm going to use this slide and then answer the question. So um, I think contributing open source is kind of the core of any Linux program. It should be that it, it, it. Otherwise, you're not doing it right. Uh, so from a Fedora point of view, um, and this is where you you guys are fantastic to work with. I've done multiple merge requests just to pull in drivers, fixes, patches that are in a maintainer's branch, and I can pull them into Fedora. Uh, and I did that for the Z series and for the X1 Carbon and get them into Fedora quicker. Um, a big thank you to, to Justin, who's been helping me along there. And uh, it, it works. The process works, and it means we can get support for our platforms in quicker. So. Um, that that's good. So we and we only do stuff that's upstream. We, we're not trying to put in anything uh, that's not upstream. Um, we've had uh, an, on my team. Uh, I've had more members of my team actually get kernel patches in. So instead of it being just me, uh, I think we have now four four members of the team have actually contributed directly to the kernel. Um, we had fix for Mac path through and, and 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 other pieces. So that for me is good. It means my team is getting more experience and we still have a long way to go. We're, we're, we're still essentially junior at this, but it's good. We're engaged and working with the kernel maintainers. Um, and then the bit I wanted to mention, LVFS. So LVFS, amazing project. I just, I love it. Um, so the question was, uh, why not for the X250? So <laughs> X250 is old, <laughs> realistically. Um, I, it's, it's quite, it's one of those, everybody thinks it's really easy to just put the firmware on LVFS. And, and there is some validity to that argument, um, but it does take a bunch of work uh, to, for the firmware team to, they have to prepare it and then they have to test it. And it's, it's not non-trivial and they, you know, they are signed up, they have their requirements. And so I'm afraid for the X250, I don't think the Linux program exists. I don't know if uh, David's on the call or not, but uh, um, I don't think we had the Linux program in place. So the firmware team just would not have had doing LVFS releases as a requirement. So that's, I'm afraid the sad reason is that that's why not. It's why the Linux program is actually kind of important because it means that I get a big hammer to go and beat up firmware team and say, hey, you need to go and do the firmware release. And, and, uh, yeah, that's there's actually there's been other mistakes that we've made um, along the way that we've we've had to fix. But I, that's my guess. I don't know the X250. I've never had one, but that's my guess why it's not there. I do want to highlight, and and I know I hate people who do this. Like, yeah, well, that's they don't answer your question. They do something else. But uh, 1.6 million downloads of firmware. It's like, I just that that blew my mind. Uh, and 500 different devices. We have been adding more devices. So battery camera, Thunderbolt controller, um, a bunch of things. They don't always go up smoothly. It's kind of interesting how, how hard it is. But uh, yeah, more platforms, uh, more devices. And we have actually got dock support up there, which segues me nicely to um, any uh, working on better support for Thunderbolt docking stations. Right now, they don't work very well. So I'd actually kind of, I am right now using the Thunderbolt 4 dock. Um, so I'd be interested to, I, I, I think I know, I think I know what your issues are and I'm guessing some of them are related to, and actually I've got to keep an eye on time, Ooh, four minutes. Um, some of them probably related to multi-monitor, uh, which is more of a mutter issue to my understanding than docking station. But to answer your question on docking stations, yes, we are definitely working on better sport. Uh, there's some things I can't tell you about, but yes, it's, uh, it's definitely a priority. I think um docking support has been challenging um it's really hard 
with a docking issue to know whether it is the dock or the monitor or the system or Linux, right? <laughs> Realistically, uh, uh, but no, we have some exercises to go on there and um, to, to hopefully improve that. We have been doing certification on the workstations, mobile workstations with the dock. So they tend to be the better ones, but I do appreciate it's not perfect. There's definitely still things that need to be worked on there. Um, so, and P1 Gen 3.3, 3. I was using P1 Gen 3 and dot three as my daily driver for like quite a while. Um, think pad ASP undocked from hot plug. I haven't seen that problem. Uh, you, I might have to get you to ping me separately on that one as to what that one is. Uh, that one's not ringing about. And, and yeah, I was using P1 Gen 3 with Fedora and a Thunderbolt 3.4. A solid six to nine months already. I've got a horrible feeling. I'm just, have I got time? I've got two minutes. Have I missed anything? Off to the sponsor social now. All right, there you go. Thank you, everybody. That was whirlwind. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll be in the sponsor social if there's any other questions or just around generally. Just, just ping me uh, with the caveat I'm on vacation next week. All righty. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>